checking on the lathe and since it involves some use of the four jaw chuck uh, I thought it was maybe of interest to some people and I decided to make a video of the next stage <clears throat> so I've made the six nodes I call them these uh, stainless steel parts around the bottom there's six of those already I make another six to go at the top and make a second hexagonal ring to fit on the top of this so of course these angles here are 120 degrees and I had to work out how to get those angles just right but it did work out fortunately I was going to use brass or bronze for this but I found I actually had a bit of scrap stainless steel bar one inch in diameter and decided to use that the first job is to um, cut off a one inch uh, section off this uh, one inch diameter stainless steel bar I happen to have lying around it came in with my father's stuff I inherited it and um, I'm I, I couldn't put this shaft right through the center of the spindle because it's uh, the spindle is 7 8 inch diameter and the shaft is 1 inch so it wouldn't fit so I had to hold it like this actually it was uh, longer before I took those 6 inches off and put a steady behind it uh, and drilled a, a center hole in the end so I've got a center position here ready for placing this, this live center so I've got here a Chinese live center I think it cost me about ten dollars pretty amazing stuff that you can get to, so cheaply from China so that's a live center that means the center spins around a dead center doesn't spin that goes in the end on the tailstock like so clamp it down tighten it up a bit I'll lock it and I think I just tightened the chuck okay and I've got it revving at 2000 no, um, 450 RPM. This chuck speed causes an optical illusion, making the chuck of the reserve spinning backwards. Um, 450 RPM. Uh, maybe this is a bit faster than what I used last time. I've made a mark here at the one inch mark, and I'm using a, uh, a parting tool. I've got a, a quick change chuck here, which I can remove the tools quickly and easily. Also from China. It's on a tapered wedge and when you pull the lever it tightens the wedge up and the parting tool is a thin blade it's very difficult to keep this thing positioned correctly in the tool holder it doesn't seem to work very well uh, possibly because the only parting tool I've got is um, not perfectly the edges aren't perfectly parallel I don't think okay so I made a mark on here at one inch with the hacksaw and so I'm ready to now start parting it It'll probably make a bit of a racket. This thing determines the center height of the tool itself, so I can screw that up a little bit, which lowers the tool down lower. See if they'll cut better. You don't want to cut too much or it will start chattering in the jam. I had somebody uh, holding the camera for me. Now the 
next stage is to clean up these blocks and uh, after it's been cut off with a parting blade it often leaves a bit of a nubbin behind. This is actually quite a big one but it doesn't really matter very much. Uh, it does make it difficult to face the block but it makes it but it's fine if you drill a hole in it first. So the next job is to drill a hole. Before drilling a hole I'm going to use a uh, centering drill um, which uh, is very rigid and doesn't wiggle around like a regular drill does. So that's very good for making a pilot hole to start the drill. So I'm going to taper on the tailstock here. And we'll tighten that up. Set it on half an inch, which is a starting point I use. Since if you go forward further than that, it pops the taper, the Morse taper out. Okay, so I'm just going just to drill a hole there. Paper on it. That makes it easier to get the quarter inch drill in. So here we go. Okay. stainless steel I'm drilling so it's actually quite hard. You don't want to drill too fast for it'll get your drill very hot and get off wood and then it's useless. Here I'm just using a standard cutting tool to do a face and the surface. First just take the quite large back off. Get rid of some of the from the cutting tool. To make an automatic crossfeed cut, I need to turn on the lead screw, which is along the bottom here. I'm pulling this lever up, and that will make the lead screw start rotating. Uh, it's got a very noisy gear train. I've had a look at it, it doesn't seem to be any missing teeth in it. Uh, we also have a gearbox here, which uh, determines how fast the lead screw is going to return. That determines how many steps per inch you'll make, and also the drive to cross So um, we need this uh, lever here in the bottom position to drive the cross seat. Just a fair amount of it, so you find that that's the position of the cross seat. Bring the tool up to the edge where it just starts cutting. I've already set it to a depth I want, it's quite shallow. Now I'll turn this knob here, likewise, and it's a flat. So now the cross feet handle is turning all by itself, driven by the lead screw. By the way, I make that handle just a little bit further. And there it is, just automatically making a nice fine cut. And using the automatic feed like this uh, gives quite a nice smooth start and finish. It's all so even, more even than you can do by hand. Turn that uh, noisy racket off. And um, I'm a bit lazy here, I just want to make sure I've got a chamfer, I'm not going to use the edge of my cutting tool, it's not really designed for this, but you can uh, adjust the angle of the cross slide by adjusting a couple of Allen screws, this, this Allen screw here, you can loosen that and uh, do a cross feed taper, but I'm just being lazy here and just do a little chamfer to the edge of the uh, cutting tool. I'm not even 